Now on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline is a man who can shoot the basketball and uh, put it in its natural habitat. He mm -hmm. sends it home often, more Indeed, so than any other basketball player has done at BYU. Tyler Haas is with us. Ty, it's been a while. How are you, man? I'm doing well. Hanging in there. How are you guys? We're Good. doing okay. Do you like Happy Gilmore, the movie? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Love it. Is that your favorite show? Or what, 20, 25 year anniversary of it coming out in theaters today. <laughs> Very, nice. Very nice. I don't remember Very seeing nice. it in theaters. It yeah, I, I remember. I think I just watched it later. Okay, so here's the plan uh, we're all going to watch that movie tonight because we still have a few nights to go until BYU has another basketball game, which is a topic yeah. in and of itself, tights. It's, it's going to be 10 days between games. Uh, there's always this, oh, the rust situation. Are you buying that BYU will be rusty after a 10-day layoff when they head out on the road against Pacific and LMU? No, I don't think so. Um, I think BYU is going to be ready to go. They, they've gone through this twice already this year. I mean, I can think of two two times, you know, right after Christmas time leading up to that Gonzaga game. And then I think there was a small break in, uh, right before St. Mary's. And so, BYU's been through this. This isn't something that's new. And so I think that's going to play into their advantage. Obviously, having some time off uh, provides a little bit of time for rest. But I think wh whenever I had some time off, it, it, it was more kind of the the disruption of rhythm. Like the game game speed is is different than 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 practice. Obviously, you want to practice it you know, as close to a game situation as possible. But being in a game, it's different. It's hard to, to replicate. And so, uh, but BYU's been through it, and I expect them to come out and, and, and play with some, some fight and be ready to go. Okay, two weeks left in the regular season, Ty, but can BYU improve its seeding in the NCAA tournament? Lenardi uh, just came out and said BYU's the, the top eight seed, which is good, a little progress there. BYU's yet to really crack seven. But only three regular season games left. So at Pacific and LMU this week, Santa Clara next Thursday, and then the WCC tournament. Now, is Gonzaga going to show up? At this point, I'd be surprised personally, but uh, BYU has a chance to go down there and maybe even win that thing. So do you think BYU can climb a seed line at this point? Uh, I think it'll be tough, but uh, maybe maybe one spot for sure. Uh, you know, BYU, their their mindset this whole season has just been one game at a time. And if they can, you know, win by an impressive margin and play those games with, you know, high efficiency, shoot the ball well, I, I don't – and and then go into the, the WCC tournament and find a way to win that thing, I, I don't see why they, they wouldn't move up a spot. Um, but, hey, I, I'm happy with an eight seed. Come on, that, that's great. They're, they're in a great position right now, and, and they're getting the respect they deserve around the country – um, and they just need to keep winning. It's all about winning, you know, every single game, the next game. Let's talk about seeding because seeding certainly matters in the NCAA tournament. Spencer and I personally hate an eight, nine game because uh, yes, it's an even matchup and, and you're more likely to win that than you are say a seven, 10 or six, 11 or so on, but like five, 12, mm. it's 50%. It's a toss up. So that feels like it's an eight, nine. And then you would get a better second mm. round game if you win. So I personally hate eight, nine. I'm hoping BYU actually slides to a 10. How do you feel about it, having played in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, the higher the seed, the better. And, and you know, let the, let the experts and everyone put the matchups where they may, but just fighting to get the best seed possible, I, I think that's, no, that's no, no, the right no. mindset tank, to have. Tank for a 10 or 11. Tank for a 10. <laughs> Let's lose this game, win the next game. <laughs> Frank, get a draft pick. <laughs> get a draft pick. Yeah. Mark, Mark Pope is somewhere yeah. losing his mind. <laughs> this, Jerem, Jordan. Yeah, yeah bring pick. that up before the coaches show tonight. <laughs> hey, Mark, him. hey, Mark, I had an idea. <laughs> Tyler Haas with us on BYU Sports Nation, talking BYU basketball as they get ready for a critical road trip at Pacific and at LMU. Ty, I want to talk about a guy who's received some more attention due to a deep blue feature and, frankly, because he's in the starting rotation and making an impact. Gideon George, do you feel like Mark Pope has found the secret sauce and a starting five that's going to remain the rest of the way with Gideon George now in the lineup? Yeah. First off, how awesome was that deep blue? If, if anyone hasn't seen that, they need to go watch that. I mean, his background and his story is just – 
it's incredible. It's one. Of, it's one of the best sports stories I've heard in a long time. So it's so awesome to have a guy like that on BYU. But I think, you know, I was thinking about this the last week or so because he's been put into the lineup. I think the coaches have been trying to get to this lineup for a while now. And, and I feel like they're finally trusting them in, in their offensive scheme and defensive game plan. But I love having Gideon George out there on the floor. He brings a length and, a, and an athleticism that – um, that we need at BYU, and uh, he's he's playing well. He's playing with a lot of confidence, and 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 shooting the ball well. He's had a couple good shooting games, and and so it, and I remember that somebody asked him like, "Hey, were you ready for for your start?" And he's like, "I've been waiting for this all year." Like I I he was ready for his moment, and um and I and I love that for for a guy to to step into his time and and play the way he he has it. it it's been exciting for me to see. Okay, Ty, what's still unanswered about this team? Because we know what they do well. Um, it, it's come in spurts by personnel with BYU playing 10 different guys. There's, there was, uh, you know, Gideon's had his moment. Richard Harwood's has his moment. Alex Barcelo's had moments here and there. Brandon Averett. It's not the same guys every game per se, which is good. It could also be a struggle when you're looking to a specific person, right? So what's still unanswered in your mind about this team as we get to the end of the season? Yeah, I, you know, I think a couple of things. Uh, first off, you know, the really the only constant we've seen with this team is is the change of lineups, right? They're like lots of guys uh, stepping up and playing different roles and, you know, lots of different uh, lineups starting. Um, it seems like a different lineup every game, but <clears throat> I I think going into the, the last part of this uh season and the postseason can there be a group that is more constant and and you know have the coaches confidence and you know there there are moments of every game where you know i think there's scoring droughts that's another big question where i'm guys are looking around who's the guy that's going to step up and um and get the lid off the rim um, I think that's that's another big thing. You know, BYU came out so hot right at the beginning of the year. It had, you know, shooting the ball so well from three. And the, the last little bit, some of it you have to attribute to game plan and, and people running BYU off the line. They're not taking as many threes. Uh, but can, can BYU shoot the ball well from the three-point line and get back to that rhythm that they had at the beginning of the year? Um, I, I think that will be huge going into the postseason if they want to make a, a deep postseason run. Yeah, and I agree. That's one concern I have with this team is I don't know where it's coming from per se. I know that Alex Barcelo is capable. I, there are a lot of capable guys, but mm. we've just not seen the volume. There have only been four games where BYU's made 10 threes in a game. This is not last year's team. It doesn't have to be. But when BYU gets in a game where mm. uh, it needs a competitive advantage and it's not happening uh, defensively and rebounding and down low, it's got to be from the perimeter. So I, I, and even if BYU wins that first round game to to beat like a top four seed, you got to make threes. You just have to. So I, I'm wondering where it comes from. Um, and we have a couple more games to perhaps figure that out. Yeah, I think part of it is uh, playing fast, playing fast, and not turning the ball over. We've seen. BYU get, you know, 15, 16, 17 turnovers in, in some of the games. That can't happen. Got to take care of the ball, take good shots. Um, but we've seen moments of each guy. I mean, Trevin Nell's shot the ball well at, at times. Alex Barcelo's been great. Brandon A. Averett's had some huge games, five or six threes each. Um, Caleb Lohner starting to shoot the ball better. But you're right, going into the postseason to beat some of these teams, it's going to take rebounding. It's going to take scoring inside. And it's also going to take good shooting from the perimeter. Um, you know, watching this last Gonzaga game, I, um, I was talking to someone saying Gonzaga played a good game. I, I don't think they played a great game. And if BYU shoots the ball well from three, they're right in it to yeah. the very end. And I thought they matched up so well uh, all the way to the end. They just didn't shoot the ball great. And th they got good looks. And it's just it, it's about shooting it with confidence and, um, and believing they're going to go in. 
Ty, your insights are always appreciated. Again, it's been too long, so let's not have a layoff uh, like the BYU basketball team did. Let's, Listen, let's keep this thing going on a regular basis. Ty and I are about to hang out all day every day during yeah. the WCC yeah. tournament. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I wish I wish you the best of luck. (laughs) Yeah, and we'll do that between games. Tyler, great to talk to you, man. We'll do it again soon. Thanks, guys. All right. Tyler Haas on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. Updating.